نكاح مبارك زواج مبارك النكاح من سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome brothers and sisters to this new episode in the series Marriage and Divorce. With me here is our Sheikh Khaytham Al-Haddad, who currently resides in the UK and is on the board of the Sharia Council of Britain. He's also the founding member of the website www.islam21c.com. We have been exploring the topic within marriage and divorce to do with obstacles of marriage, what might validate or invalidate the nikah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have a question which I think is very relevant, especially to our audiences, especially in the West. These days we have an issue when it comes to our sisters who like to marry someone, but this person or this brother is classified by them as non-practicing Muslim. Yeah. In this case, what, what is the condition? Is this an obstacle? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Wallahi, this needs uh, some discussion. Okay, non-practicing, what does it mean, non-practicing? And I know, I do agree with you that this is a valid question. However, let me just uh, conclude the discussion about marrying non-Muslims, yeah? Before Inshallah. talking about marrying non-practicing Muslims, yeah? So we said that the man is allowed to marry a woman from the people of the book, yeah? But not any other non-Muslim, mm -hmm. provided that certain conditions are observed yeah I want to mention this condition briefly because it might be common in the West this issue of marrying a non-Muslim lady mm -hmm. you know after finishing the previous episode I remembered that I visited the Czech Republic and I found that there were many brothers married to many Czech ladies and the Czech ladies don't identify themselves as Christians. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, it was common. It was common. And some of them are married to them for 10 years, 20 years. They have children, they have grandchildren. And they say that my wife is still, she's agnostic, she's uh, atheist. This is common in Czech Republic. Yeah? So, first of all, to marry a lady, she must be either a Muslim or a Ahli Kitab. Other than that, it is not allowed. And again, as we said about sisters marrying non-Muslims, it is zina. In this case, it is zina as well. Yes. Yeah? So a Muslim marrying a Hindu, marrying a Sikh, marrying, this is invalid. Do you remember in the previous episode, but the episode before that, I mentioned that I want to mention a story. Yes. We forgot to mention it because of time. And in the new episode, we forgot to mention it. A man came to me, yeah, a professional brother, young brother, etc. It seems that he doesn't know much about Islam. He came to me with his Hindu or Sikh lady, colleague. And he said that he wants to marry her. By the way, in that session, a lady, journalist, came to us in the Islamic Sharia Council to report about our activities. And normally we allow ladies to attend a meeting or an interview with the clients after the consent of the client, yeah? yeah? And normally I ask the client, there is a journalist, if you are interested, she can attend the meeting. In that situation, I forgot to ask the client, those, yeah, couple. And it was the Qadr of Allah that I forgot to ask them. So I remember when I was standing, I came, they came. This is one of the recent cases. I said, what can I do for you? He said, this is my colleague at work. She is uh, a caring lady, etc. I am interested to marry her, but I think he said Hindu or Sikh, something like this. Am I allowed to have my nikah with her? Obviously, he came to what? He came to Islamic Sharia Council. So he wants, what does he want? The Islamic ruling. The Islamic ruling. He doesn't want the civil law. The civil law, he can go somewhere else to find out about it. So I told him, in Islam, it is not allowed. Sometimes we have to be honest. 
If we say, well, sisters, you know, okay, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is you are not allowed to marry her. Yeah? And if you marry her, this will not be recognized in Islam. Because he did ask this question. And she asked this question. Yeah? She said, if he marries me, what is this going to be? I said, this will not be an Islamic marriage. It will not be seen as a marriage. She said, what is it? I said, it will be seen as zina. So when she heard this and actually explained what the zina for nication, yeah? She said, no, I'm not interested. Mm. Either your religion accepts me or I don't want. I said, yeah, fair enough. Now, she was a very reasonable lady. Yeah. Okay. Now, as I said to the, some authorities, I said, imagine that the journalist reported this to the media. What is she going to report? That a beautiful couple, yeah, a promising man and a promising lady, a caring man and a caring lady, very beautiful couple, they mm -hmm. can form the best family. And they were looking for the future. They are bright people. They want to have beautiful children, blah, blah, blah. They want to this extremist or to this extreme body. And they told him, no, it is haram. It is prohibited. You can't do it. They will report us like this. And we will be identified as extremists or radicals or maybe later as terrorists because of this. And this is what we are saying that in the West, they have to accept us as Muslims. We cannot change our religion. Yeah? In India, the government accepted Muslims as Muslims. Yeah. Okay? It is not the best model, but they accepted them as Muslims. They did not force Muslims to change their religion and to say that you are allowed to marry Hindu. And Muslims have been living with Hindus and Sikh for hundreds of years. خلاص لكم دينكم واليدين. This is your religion and this is my religion. Yeah? We need to look forward how to coexist peacefully. Mm. We cannot say that we cannot live together unless you change your religion and I change my religion. This will never happen. Okay? So we cannot change this. Now, let me continue the conditions for a Muslim man marrying a non-Muslim lady from the people of the book. The first condition... She should be either Muslim or from the people of the book. The second condition is she has to be muhsan, muhsan, chaste woman. Okay? Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, وَطَعَامُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ حِلُّ لَكُمْ وَطَعَامُكُمْ حِلُّ لَهُمْ وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Yeah? وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ what does wal muhsanat min alladhina utul kitaba min qablikum mean? And the chaste women from the people of the book. What does this mean? It means that if this lady sleeps with any man, even if she is Muslim, or even if she is from the people of the book, you are not allowed to marry her. Now, with Muslims, generally speaking, they don't sleep with any man. Now, the people of the book, okay, because they don't identify, now especially the people of the book are secular. Yeah. yeah? They don't identify what we identify as zina, they don't identify it as fornication. Yeah? Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But, and this is the reform, now the reformed religion. They don't identify a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship as what? As zina. Mm. They consider zina as what? When there is a married man and a married lady, and the man cheated on her and he sleeps with another woman. Adultery. This is zina in their eyes. Yes. But a young boy with a young girl sleeping together, they are not married. They say this is a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. Normal, it's very common. Yeah, this is common. This is love, yani, this love. love. Or whatever it is. Whatever. Okay? For us, this is zina. For us, this is fornication. Now, can a Muslim man marry a lady like this, that she had a previous relationship as a boyfriend-girlfriend? Mm. Okay? Now, technically speaking, she needs to repent from this. Yeah? Or, if she were exposed to a situation like this, she wouldn't accept it. 
in order to identify her, her as a muhsana. Which means, be careful, if a brother used to know a lady from the people of the book and he used to sleep with her, then he repented and he wants to become a good practicing Muslim and he wants to marry her. Now, she used to sleep with him. Technically, she used to commit zina with him. Mm -hmm. And she does not stop that because she has not seen this as a problem. I was a problem in the first place. So, is this brother allowed to marry his girlfriend? Does she classify as a chest woman? Yeah? This is a matter that needs to be discussed. And inshallah, Sheikh, we will discuss this right after the break. Inshallah. 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 Brothers and sisters, please come back with us very soon to continue this very, very important topic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that he created the death and the life, the life for the purpose, for the purpose of, testing of, us. of testing us. Taqwa and truthfulness, humility and repentance, kindness and gratefulness. Are you prepared for the final exam? Are you ready? Generosity and tenderness give true value to life. To answer the most important exam that you will ever face. Will ever face. Dr. Jonathan Cazales. Live, live your life, your life purpose. on purpose. Learn to utilize every moment of life to make it meaningful and precious in Live Your Life on Purpose. Every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 11.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, that is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half. Every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this, while others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal. While others say, nope, this is haram. 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 Are, you Are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al Ahkam, where, with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Quran and from the Sunnah, which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim al Hakim in Umdat al Ahkam next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. With me here is our Sheikh Khaytham al Haddad, who currently resides in the UK and is on the board of the Sharia Council of Britain. He's also the founding member of the website www.islam21c.com. We are currently finding out very, very important information about the issues of who can marry who, specifically in this case, Sheikh, the Muslim woman who she can or cannot marry, and also the same for the Muslim man. Can yeah. he marry a non-Muslim? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. We said that the man is allowed to marry a woman from the people of the book, yeah, but not any other non-Muslim, mm -hmm. provided that certain conditions are observed, yeah. I want to mention this condition briefly because it might be common in the West, this issue of marrying 
a non-Muslim lady. Mm -hmm. But I visited a Czech Republic, and I found that there were many brothers married to many Czech ladies, and the Czech ladies don't identify themselves as Christians. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, it was common. It was common. And some of them are married to them for 10 years, 20 years. They have children. They have grandchildren. And they say that my wife is still, she's agnostic. She's uh, atheist. This is common in Czech Republic. Yeah? So, first of all, to marry a lady, she must be either a Muslim or a Kitab. Other than that, it is not allowed. And again, as we said about sisters marrying non-Muslims, it is zina. In this case, it is zina as well. Yes. Yeah? So a Muslim marrying a Hindu, marrying a Sikh, marrying, this is invalid. Okay? Now, technically speaking, regarding the case I mentioned, a Muslim man had a Christian girlfriend. Obviously, this girlfriend, technically speaking, this relationship is zina. Mm. But the Christian lady, because of her secular nature now, okay, because of the secular nature of Christians, she wouldn't identify this as zina. And the community or the society does not identify this as zina. Well, they don't have the same values. They don't have the same values, okay? And they differentiate between this case and the case of the lady that she sleeps with any man. They say that that is bad, but this is an innocent relationship. Now, do we classify this lady as a chest woman because she slept with this man only and she refuses to sleep with any other man? Mm. This needs yani, a group of scholars to discuss this issue. I consider this as one of the contemporary issues regarding fiqh of minorities. Yes. Because from one hand, this is technically speaking, what? Zina. Yes. But from the other hand, she is not that lady that sleeps with any man. And she believes that she is a chaste. And the biggest problem that I mentioned maybe before, that the society, now we have to understand this, that the society, because of its secular nature, has started to look at marriage differently. Marriage now is a civil contract to preserve the financial consequences of this relationship. It's been devalued. Devalued is another issue, but I mean the definition of marriage. Mm, yes. The definition of marriage in the West is a civil relationship, yeah? that is built in order to preserve some legal rights. You remember when we said, what is marriage in Islam? In Islam, marriage is a contract that allows the couple or the married people to have sexual intimacy. So, sexual relationship is not allowed except... In this situation. In this situation, which is marriage. But for them, they can have sexual relationship with anyone. Yeah? Okay? This is not an issue for them. But married people, they have legal consequences, financial consequences. So that is marriage for them. That's why they run away from marriage, but they stay in a relationship which is maybe cohabiting by common law, as we have in the UK. And the lady that is involved in such a relationship... She doesn't sleep with any other man. Mm -hmm. Yeah? The difference is her boyfriend or her partner, yeah, not boyfriend, partner, and this is the word that is used now, they did not register the marriage in the civil bureau, in the civil court. So they are not identified by the law as married, married. people. Otherwise, they are identified by the society as what? As partners as a couple and they have a children and people respect them they don't see that they are indecent people etc i am mentioning this because if there are scholars who are watching this they will not say wow sheikh Haitham became a liberal person he's looking at this boyfriend friend relationship as 
decent relationship or he doesn't see it as a zina. I'm not saying any, I'm not talking about a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship where this lady sleeps with another man. No, 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 I'm not talking about this. We need to understand the difference, yeah? And we need to understand the, the Western context. Otherwise, we'll not be scholars, we'll not be fuqaha, okay? And we will come up with wrong answers, mm -hmm. by the way, okay? So now, we said this kind of relationship, does it mean that this lady is a chaste woman or not? It is, I cannot confirm an answer now. We need to discuss it, okay? Why we mention this? Because we said that it might happen that a man, yeah, brings his girlfriend or his partner, she's not Muslim, she's from the people of the book, and he wants to marry her. Can we do this or not? I said, I don't want to confirm Who an answer in public. Now, on the other side, we were talking about a Muslim lady getting married to a non-Muslim man. This is identified as a zina. This is the opinion of all scholars. There is no difference of opinions. There is no discussion about it. Full stop. Okay? Whether he is a Christian, he is non-Christian, whatever. Same rule is applied on a couple, yeah? If they were married and one of them accepted Islam. This is a masala that needs to be discussed. Maybe we can discuss it sometime later. I want to go back to the issue of non-practicing brothers. So now, in many cases, some sisters say, we received a proposal from a non-practicing brother. Do we go ahead for that or not? Just before we continue, non-practicing brother or sister, does it make a difference? Uh, yeah, or a sister, or a sister. See, the first question I ask, what do you mean by non-practicing brother? Mm -hmm. Is he a brother who does not pray at all? Or he prays, but he has some shortcomings? This is the first question. If he doesn't pray at all, yeah, then it is problematic. I normally advise not to marry him. But if he prays, khalas. The first main condition, which is that he is a Muslim, identified, declassified, etc. as a Muslim. Let us move to the next step. Why you call him a non-practicing person? Mm. Is he committing a sin? Does he like Islam, etc.? To cut it short, if this person prays, if this brother prays or this sister prays, and this brother in general loves Islam, loves to be a better Muslim, then I say to sister, generally speaking and technically speaking, you are allowed to marry him. Now, is this the best choice or not the best choice? Different issue. Is a different issue. Unfortunately, this is something very common in the West. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we want to make this program as relevant as possible to all communities. And that's why I keep saying it's very useful to have you here because you're on the Sharia Council on the board, so you see practical examples in the yes. society. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah yani, accept it from us. I mean, and may Allah help us to benefit the Ummah. May Allah help us to disseminate this information to people. Because seriously, Wallahi, from the bottom of the heart, I always say that because of our ignorance of Islam, we put ourselves into major problems. And some of those problems are unsolvable problems. You remember the case of that sister who was married to the first man, to the second man, third man, without divorce from the first one and the second one. Disaster. And then she wants a solution, and she wants a quick solution. Subhanallah. How can we solve a problem like this? Mm. Yeah? So that's why we need to learn, and we need to listen. And that's why we are trying to make this discussion as relevant as possible. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. It was great talking to you. Inshallah, we will continue in other episodes and other topics. Brothers and sisters, please return with the next episode with us to discuss further obstacles and also then lead on to other conditions that might validate or invalidate the nikah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.